you're plans experts on post 2015, and you're the European the co-chair of the European Task Force Beyond 2015. So, who else could I have this discussion with than you to discuss the post 2015 framework? So, 2015 is an important year, not only because we're coming to the end of the Millennium Development Goals, the MDGs, but also because we're reaching the crucial phase in the negotiation of the sustainable, the new sustainable development goals. So there has been good and bad to the MDGs, but now looking, focusing ahead on what comes with the sustainable development goals, what would you say should be different than the MDGs? The MDGs were uh, rather a traditional development framework. That was what they were designed to be. So that's not to criticise them. But this time around, what we would like is uh, for them for the framework to be rather different and rather more comprehensive, which is why we're using the term sustainable development goals, mm -hmm. because it, they will, the framework will cover the three aspects of sustainable do, uh, development. So social will still be there, but there will also be much more on the environment, mm -hmm. and also trying to tackle some of the things around the economy that might not be working right now. And what we're also hoping is that there'll be a fourth aspect or dimension, if you like, to this, and that will be that the governance issues that are relevant to the social, the environmental and the economic sides of mm -hmm. sustainable development will also be addressed. Mm -hmm. So you've been involved in a lot of discussions with a wide range of stakeholders and there are currently a big list of uh, sustainable development goals but I mean within all, among all those discussions what would you say are the five must-have in this post-2015 framework? For us, um, within PLAN, we are most particularly focusing on gender equality. Um, we would like the Decent Work Agenda to be part of the framework, mm -hmm. hopefully together with social protection. And I think inequality in general, because it really drags back progress in the whole world. Mm -hmm. The huge degrees of inequality between either uh, countries or people within a country. So they would be my three sort of elements more for content. But I'd like to add a couple, perhaps on sort of process yeah, and a half, go ahead. which would be more, I would really urge the negotiators to be thinking a bit differently, a bit more out of the box than they are at the moment. I think we won't be opening up the goals that we have, that were discussed within the open working mm -hmm. group, we have 17 at the moment, and I think they won't be opened up. However, it's possible that the targets might be opened up and slightly renegotiated, we don't know to what degree, but if that's the case, then it would be... Uh, I think advisable if we could be thinking slightly different about some of the goal areas, mm -hmm. a bit more out of the box. And then my last point might be, um, if we could address the interlinkages between the different parts of the framework, because we always seem to end up with this silo mentality where in one goal area you have mm -hmm. all the things that are linked to that particular goal, and then we keep, say, the environmental, the economic side of things for those particular goal areas, whereas in actual fact they all impact on each other massively, which makes this very exciting and complex to work on, mm -hmm. but that should be reflected in the framework. And was that one of the weaknesses or downsides of the MDGs, this lack of synergies and interconnection between the different goals? I don't think it's linked just or only a, a fault, if you like, of the MDGs. We all operate like mm. that. Even if you look at the, how a government operates, you have ministries, mm. and they're all dedicated to their own particular issues, and there's almost no communication between them, mm. or even within departments, within a ministry. So we just all operate like that in the world today. But this framework gives us an opportunity to be thinking mm. a bit differently. Well, let's hold on. <laughs> we'll get there. So, I mean, there's been a lot of discussion around this framework being universal. Why? Why would you say it's so important that it's universal, it doesn't only target you know, so-called developing countries? Mm. It is critical, but what we're hearing at the moment is quite a lot around every country doing their fair share, and that is an important aspect of universality, but it, universality should actually go much more than a country doing their fair share, because poverty and inequality exist everywhere. Mm -hmm. Even in Europe, in, in most countries, yeah. we have quite some degree of poverty, um, so every country actually needs to work on all the goal areas, each and every goal area, and the targets within them to make sure that the inequalities, the gaps between people, are reduced. So that's also what we mean by universality. I mean, are there any countries, member states, which are not totally in favour of this universality? I was expecting that we would hear some member states uh, starting to move away from this because the EU is trying to uh, work with a single voice, acting mm -hmm. with a single voice in the negotiations in New York. 
but so far so good. And in the last council conclusions, they've come out the strongest so far, in fact, mm. in, uh, because we were pushing them a lot to say, what do you really mean by universality? Because it isn't enough that we all play our part, which is the mm. phrase they're using a lot. We need to go further than that, and we all, every country, needs to work on every goal area. Mm -hmm. And they've come the closest so far to saying that, so we're very hopeful that all the member states will fall behind this So idea. good so far. So good, yeah, exactly. That's good. Um, this year is also the European Year for Development. Um, what do you think we could do to make the most of this European Year for Development to sort of make sure that the EU's position is well, um, is uh, well positioned, well, is well established in the negotiations uh, on the post 2015 framework? I think maybe this links to some of the, the question you were asking me about universality, mm -hmm. because the European Year for Development is also about communicating with European citizens, people who live in Europe. And one of the things that we are all going to have to imagine in the future is that we live somewhat differently. If we're going to remain within planetary boundaries, if we're going to be doing much more for the environment going forward, we all have to change our behaviour. Ideally, what we'd like to see is that, for example, European citizens consume less mm -hmm. and differently and are much more conscious about waste. And that the EU, together with the citizens, will maybe do a lot more awareness raising around this. So this is the sort of thing that we could hope that the EU would be you know, doing through the EYD, the European Year for Development. Do you think that a lot of European citizens know what discussions are ongoing for the moment? whether at the European level or UN level on, this, on these SDGs? No. If I'm very honest, mm. I think that ordinary people are probably not familiar with this at all, like they were not really very familiar with the MDGs either. Mm. I think that we haven't yet got there in communication terms on the new framework either, but we're fortunately right at the beginning with this new framework, and civil society is much more involved than it was around the MDGs. So that's already a good beginning, and the willingness, I think, is there to try mm. and communicate more. And everyone's very conscious that this was one of the downsides of the MDGs, mm. that ordinary people didn't have a clue. So I'm very much hoping that there'll be much more effort in this now. Me too, and um, let's hope we manage to get some messages across in all the actions we'll be doing under European Year for Development. Then one, one last question. Um, if, if you can answer it in any way, because maybe it's too early, you don't have a crystal ball, but um, what could go wrong at this stage of the negotiations on the SDGs and afterwards on the long term, you know, what, what could go wrong once the new Sustainable Development Goals enter into force? Uh, on the first part of your mm -hmm. question, what could go wrong during the negotiations, I mean everything could go wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, key states within the UN could back out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be Russia, it could be the States, it could mm -hmm. be China, but they just back out because it's too comprehensive, it's gone a little bit too far. We are already having to modify language quite a lot. So, for example, human rights are mm -hmm. not allowed to be mentioned within the text of the framework themselves because China's been very clear that that's a no-go area for them. So how are they made so, at the moment? Well, we're trying to uh, insert standards mm -hmm. and so that the targets represent what would actually be a standard. Mm -hmm. Um, what we've noticed is that currently some of the targets actually don't reach what are already accepted and agreed standards in a certain area, which is why actually we would be quite happy if they would be opened up a little bit mm -hmm. so that we could get the right, the, you know, the highest level, the most ambitious standard. So I think that the worst case scenario is that the framework doesn't really get agreed on time or at all or only by a certain number of the UN member states. We really need everybody at the table mm. right to the bitter end to agree this framework. But hopefully without it becoming a real low common denominator either. Mm. This is again another, yeah. of course, another uh, possibility. Uh, in terms of what could go wrong afterwards, of course, is around the implementation. Mm -hmm. That countries won't really implement, they won't take it seriously, it is quite a large agenda, and they may f feel as though it's too much to cope with and then they start prioritising or will do certain things that suit them, mm -hmm. you know, cherry picking if you like, between the goal areas. We wouldn't want to see that either, because that would undermine the achievement of all the goal areas because of these huge interlinkages between them. Mm. So for us, accountability is really crucial, and um, we would like it to go further than just monitoring and review, but we understand there's quite a lot of reticence among the UN member states on going further than just monitoring and review. Mm. But accountability for us would mean that you would need to be looking to what happens if countries aren't coming up trumps, mm. let's say 
on, on you know, fulfilling their commitments in the framework. So is this something Plan is actively working on, the accountability? We are. We are particularly interested in the governance side of things mm. and the accountability because the two are very linked. What we would like is that young people are able to uh, give their opinions on how they think progress is being mm. made in their context um, and what could be done to improve the framework going forward, perhaps, even. And of course that will happen at local and national levels more than at, a, say, a regional or an international mm. level. But what we really need is all the processes and the mechanisms and the structures to be put in place. And this is something that we're working very closely mm -hmm. on at the moment to see what can we uh, already agree by 2015 so that these mechanisms are up and running or ready to be up and mm -hmm. running once the frameworks agree, rather than coming into effect about two years later, as was the case with the MDGs. Mm. But it's quite a long way to go. So exactly, yeah, I think there's still a long way to go. Even once we we'll get the full list of the sustainable development goals, I think there's still a long way to go for the monitoring, the implementation and uh, yeah. so um, maybe we can catch up at a later point and have a follow-up interview uh, that would be to interesting, see, uh, yeah. to that see would be how great. we're doing after, uh, after September and next year in the years to come. I look forward to it.